brother, brother, and welcome everyone to our full spoiler review of Wakanda Forever. Man, you ready to talk some Black Panther stuff? I am so ready to talk some Black Panther I stuff. I know. As ever, as ever, when we go and see a movie, every single person who comes with us is always very annoyed about the fact that nobody is allowed to talk about the movie afterwards until we've recorded this review, which is about to happen, and then finally we can go and brain dump with the rest of the office. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Let's dive on in. All right, Wakanda forever. So normally, as you said, we don't talk to the anyone else at the office until afterwards, but I didn't even see it with you guys. So I couldn't even gauge your like reaction watching it on the screen. I had to go see it by myself. Okay, so, so I, I was there with the rest of the crew yeah. and I will tell you that I think people have learned us so much at this point that like we walked out of the movie theater. There wasn't even that like circle conversation that typically happens. Yeah. We like left the movie theater and everybody walked their cars and just drove home. It just drove home. It was just like there was absolutely like I was with everyone and had absolutely no idea what the general what consensus the feeling is. Like was. even like there, there was no like <laughs> gasping or anything. Uh, no, 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 okay. no, no, I don't think, I, I don't have, I, don't, I do not have a great sense of how anybody else feels about it. I haven't seen any of the other coverage about the movie. All I have is just my own original brain thoughts. Man. So let's okay. go ahead and just kick off right away with the beginning, which is of course uh, T'Challa's uh, funeral and like yes. that whole like procession and mm -hmm. uh, of course gets to like the opening Marvel credits, which oh, they did silently. Dude, I almost cried. I did <laughs> cry. I was like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh man, this is gonna, this is gonna hit me hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that uh, the one piece of information, I had several friends text me last night. They were like, what did you think? And I said, I thought they handled T'Challa well. Oh my gosh, um, I, it to me like, like there were so many parts of like the movie making process just that felt like, you know what? We, this whole movie is just gonna be like as respectful as possible to Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Like they yeah. open with the funeral procession, they change the opening credits, there's like an obvious moment of silence, all of the other characters have been removed, it's nothing but um, Black Panther, T'Challa clips yeah. happening there. Um, there's like the, I would say the mid credit scene where uh, Nakia comes back and like reveals that like they had a son and his yeah. name's T'Challa and it's like, uh, there is no comic book counterpart for that character. That's not like a canon character. That has a completely original, um, you know, thing uh, heading out in front of it where um, like that, that's not based on anyone. Apparently the only point in the comics where T'Challa has a son is in some like side universe for like some one shot and it's like a, like a what if scenario and he has a, a kid with Storm from the X-Men. Okay. Well, obviously that's not who this is because we know who the mom is. Yeah. So, and Storm hasn't been introduced uh, in any capacity. So brand new character, basically just there to say like, this is this was for uh, Chadwick, I guess, just like honoring him. And then also I felt like the fact that there was not a like post post credit scene was also like part of the like respect being paid. Like we're not even gonna try and like promote something else. Like that's not what it's about. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's really it was. I, I thought I thought across the board it was it was very well handled. Um, and you know like obviously it's always difficult like when there's these out of universe things that happen. Um, yeah. And in this case, obviously it's just like so sad and like just like tragic and everything. Um, but the amount of like. The, I, I thought the whole way through, like the way that it was integrated into the plot, everything that they did in, in terms of like the approach and respecting the character and like where he came from, uh, even down to the fact like, you know, I absolutely loved Black Panther. It's been like one of my like top three uh, Marvel movies of all time. And it wasn't until I started going back and like reviewing things before coming into Wakanda forever that like it even just like settled in on me just like how pure of heart the character of T'Challa was yeah and how much that purity of heart played a role inside of like the rest of Wakanda forever in terms of like the the various like you know demons that people were battling even down to the fact that like Shuri was sort of finding herself in this like very like vengeful oh yeah you know like ma like mindset and everything um it was it was really 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 fascinating how well like the character as as already established um like dovetailed with 
the entire approach that they that they brought to the table with this particular scenario. Yeah. So I was I was very like I thought it was really good. I definitely teared up like as like that that like moment of silence happened in the beginning. I was just like, man, that was powerful. And it's amazing to me how powerful silence can be. It was. And it's like they chose exactly the right like time to do it, too, because like they normally use that like Marvel sequence to like play like the music, like pump you up like, yeah, let's go. Superhero time. Woo. And you're like, you know, and it's playing. And you're like, oh, no, it's different. <laughs> oh, it's like you're so conditioned to like feel a certain way when you see the logo pop up that this was just like, oh, man, this is OK. All right. Here we go. Yeah. 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 So. Very, very, uh, very cool to see, like, you know, what the decisions were made there and everything and, and how it played out. So, yeah. Um, that being said, uh, there was this movie is very long at two hours and 41 minutes, I believe. Um, oh, man. Was it that long? It was that Jeez, long. Okay. Yeah. Well, so it goes fast. <laughs> it, it's a yeah, it's a very like lengthy uh, run through and o- almost by necessity because there's a lot of various big stories that are being introduced. I mean, it's almost just as much a, you know, Namor origin story. Uh, yep. Like, you know, it could have been like, you you probably could have dissected the movie in a way, turned it into two separate movies and had one of them be like a Namor version of it and one of them be a Shuri version of oh, it. Oh yeah, right. You could probably um, have that. Yeah, and then it was like, it's not like, it, they had like a weird, uh, like a problem to solve almost with like the passing of the torch of from of Black Panther from um, T'Challa to Shuri because like Shuri is an established character. Like you don't need like her origin story. Right. And like the Black Panther like mantle is an established thing. So you don't really need to know more about like how the process works. But like you do need to suddenly merge this character with this mantle in a way that is like sort of her origin as the wearer of the Black Panther uh, you know, uh, mantle, but without it feeling just like, this is just yet another origin story. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that was an interesting one too, because like a big, um, a big element obviously of the original Black Panther movie is that Killmonger comes in, it destroys all the heart-shaped herbs. Right. And so you do find yourself like, as you're, you know, barreling towards Wakanda Forever uh, release is like, I mean, there's a lot of questions obviously involved, but like, it's like, how are they going to handle that? Like, what is going to be the explanation as to how sure he can ultimately become, you know, the Black Panther where this has just been like destroyed. It's like, you really don't want it to be that like, oh yeah, but we we did, of course, like they were all destroyed and that was a problem. And, you know, we had to like, you know, come up right. with some creative solutions. There, there, There is like the break, you know, glass in case of emergency one that we keep, you know, yeah. in the vault. So we were fine. Like, it so it's like, out. so it's like, yeah, we can, we can use that one, but that's like for real, for real. Our last one, like we promised this time. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was very interesting the way that they went about it because, uh, Shuri's whole thing from again, coming from black Panther is <clears> that <throat> she is like the tech expert. She's like, um, like 007's, Q. Yeah. Um, like basically here's like, all your gear. Right. Like you get to like see like all of like the inventions being made. She's got like the really cool lab, like all the stuff that she does. And and she does also for this society that is so deeply rooted in tradition, which is otherwise like highly, highly technically advanced. The rest of her family seems to represent that like deeply rooted tradition yeah. uh, aspect of it. And then like Shuri, de- like even, you know, in the um during that first ceremony where, you know, T'Challa has to go and be challenged by the other tribes and stuff. Like Shuri raises her hand and she's just like, can we get this over with? This course, it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, and it's like, she like she's she's clearly just like mocking the- um, Yeah, like the tradition of it all. Exactly. Yeah, like the, so the ceremonialness. It's like, yeah, you're the king, we get it. <laughs> right. That yeah. being said though, I thought there was sort of like an interesting aspect of this movie that I, c- I couldn't quite tell how well it got like woven into the overall storyline. And this is going to basically be merging those two ideas. It's the fact that Shuri sort of like, you know, scoffs a little bit at the like Wakandan traditions and like sees, sees them as like a little bit like um, overkill or a little bit too much like pomp and circumstance, whatever. Right. Um, mixed with sort of like, her version of like technology and the way that like technology should be playing a role in like the world that they're in and like sort of like where her like fascination lies, which also branches off a tiny bit into like then her budding friendship with Riri Williams, who is of course like Ironheart, yeah. also introduced in this particular movie. But they they set up a couple of things early on and I, I couldn't quite tell 
where it was ultimately going to go. And I, I can't tell if it's the type of thing that played out in a way that was super meaningful, uh, which is like, Ramonda shows up in Shuri's lab and they're sort of having like their original conversation. And she's sort of got like her qualms, if you will, about like artificial intelligence and Shuri's sort of like assuring her like, no, don't worry. Like, it's not like in the movies, artificial intelligence is fine. It just does exactly what I ask it to do. And in a lot of ways, I felt like that was very symbolic of where Shuri is at mentally during this movie, which is like, the AI in a lot of ways felt like autopilot. Yeah. And I almost felt like that was a lot of what I expected to see from the movie is Shuri relying on this AI, relying on autopilot, like not stepping out and like really truly making decisions. I think it was supposed to be like more like representative of her like not dealing with like her grief, which she doesn't do until like the very end of the movie. It's just like, nope, it's like, I like machines and I'm diving into this because like I can control the machines. They do exactly what I tell them to do. Whereas just like, like I, uh, I, I could not control my brother's death, even though it felt like I like came up with the cure like three minutes late. Right. Well, and that was the thing though, is that like she, she, she's unable to, to come up with a cure and it's not until like way later in the film after she's like recovered this like piece of, you know, the original plant that Namor's people had used. Oh yeah, their like version do. of the heart shaped herb. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. Which was, I mean, fair enough. I felt like that was a, it was well handled in terms of like, there is other vibranium and the other people who have found it, it have also isolated themselves. It was, like, yeah, it was like, it did like canonically all sort of like make sense. Like, oh yeah, cause like that was the other thing I was like, wait, if the heart shaped herb, like why, why doesn't the heart shaped herb grow other places? Like I sort of forgot that. And it's like, oh, it's cause the vibranium enriched the soil and that caused the herbs to grow. And that's, that's the reasoning behind it. So I was like, okay, if the vibranium struck somewhere else, it stands to reason they also have one of these plants. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But the thing was, is that like, I almost, <laughs> I thought it was interesting because ultimately what you have though, is like Shuri's version of Wakanda, which is that super technical, technologically advanced version, which is able to then like synthetically recreate that heart shaped herb. Yeah. It's like, it, it almost felt to me like, I, like the, the things ended up sticking together too much. Like it was almost supposed to be like, you were supposed to see her embrace other aspects of like what it meant to be like a Wakandan leader or something, or maybe even like more come to terms with like all of the grief that she's going through. And like, that is sort of like the ignition, like when combined with all that technology and like artificial intelligence. And these are things that like exactly so. Like it was surprising to me that the unreformed version of the character was ultimately able to make the breakthrough that was able to lead to the like slightly corruptified version of Shuri that then goes on this like- Like war path. War path, effectively. Yeah. Like, um, and so then even, even from there, like, so you've got, you know, she goes in and like obviously takes the heart-shaped herb that she then creates when she goes to the astral plane, you know, like you sort of see her like step around the throne there mm -hmm. and of all people, it's um, Killmonger. Killmonger, dude. I was like, I was like, oh no way! <laughs> when I, that happened, that sh that surprised me. You, you were surprised, okay. yeah. Well, I felt like it was. I, I was anticipating his return. I was anticipating his return as well. I didn't know in what capacity. Like, I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, it makes sense that he's in the astral plane. I thought, like, at the end of the last movie, he's like, bury me at sea. And so it's like, no, we're going underwater and they have these other vibranium people. Like, they probably saved him or something. That was exactly what yeah. I thought was gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I thought they were gonna have this like ace in the hole and the ace in the hole was ultimately gonna be Killmonger. And it was right. gonna be like, what? Like, oh no. Yeah. Um, Turns out, I mean, to be fair, I felt like Namor was sort of just like Killmonger 2.0, or almost like. Now, I, you know what's weird is that I felt like Namor was almost like Diet Killmonger, even though he's definitely like got more physical superpowers. Oh yeah, like yeah. way, 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 yeah. yeah. Like definitely has a whole lot going for him in terms of what he's capable of, and yeah. even the fact that he's just been alive for, for so very for long. For so long! Um, Which maybe, do you think, is because Shuri's herb came from like the same kind of like her version of the heart shaped herb was like, like combined Wakandan and T Talokan. Okay. Um, like, th like stuff was, do you think like that makes her kind of like immortal now? 
or like long, long living? No, not necessarily. Because I think that in the movie, what the, what they have happen is they all take it. Yeah. All of Namor's people do, and it's his mother who's pregnant with him. Yeah. That's sort of then like. I guess yeah, it's like their their god who I guess are like you know real because we've seen like Bast the Panther god in Love and Thunder. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's like, like yeah, their god like chose him as like their savior person. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so okay, yeah. So like take I am still I'm still kinda like stuck on like the Shuri thing. Because yeah, like okay. yeah, so you've got you got Shuri, she goes in, she sees Killmonger in there. Like I think that I had like sort of mixed feelings about this being like what Killmonger's role in the story sort of was because I felt I felt like they were trying to like Take Shuri, who in the beginning is like sort of like struggling, like uh, for very fair reasons with like, you know, the, the grief that she's like basically being buried underneath. And I, I almost felt like they were trying to figure out like, how do you take these negative feelings that she's having? And, and maybe this is just all, this, uh, as I'm saying it out loud, like maybe it just makes more sense. But like, Killmonger is a bridge that like didn't represent to me the trajectory that like Shuri was going anyway, but almost like, intercepted and then like corrupted. I feel like, yeah, I think you're right, but it's like, because when she visits Talokan early in the movie, like he's like, do you want to be an ally with me? We'll take on the whole world. And she's like, no, no, we should be like, she's like really diplomatic at like almost every step of the way. Like, let's not solve this with violence. Like maybe we can find a different way to do it. Right. Um, until uh, Namor then attacks Wakanda and like straight up uh, kills her mom. And that's what it seems like, like, I've been trying to be noble. I've been trying to do things the right way. And look what happened. Another yeah. one of my family members is dead. Right. And I think that is sort of, yeah, you're right. And like, poof, it like intercepts her, like otherwise better instincts. It's just like, I'm just mad. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but so I, I guess like where, where that then goes is because what I, what I feel like they were building towards the whole time. And I did think this was, I think it was <coughs> clever. I don't know if I thought that it was well executed. Okay. Is basically like Shuri is like really, I mean, obviously going through all this stuff. She really needs to like figure out like how she's going to become like, you know, the leader of these people and and like take the ideals from like her family members and like maybe specifically T'Challa. The bookends you ultimately end up seeing, I see starting with T'Challa's first ceremony where uh, Imboku, M'Baku. M'Baku yeah. comes yeah. in and basically challenges him. And M'Baku's basically like winning. T'Challa sort of gets like his second wind, comes into the battle, takes over, has him on like the edge. And he, like he can kill him in that moment. Right. And he's like, yield. <clears throat> like your people need you, yield. And it's like this like super iconic moment, I feel like for T'Challa, because it like represents like, he, he basically just got like very unexpected. This was like not intended to actually be like a battle. Right, yeah, like, it's just supposed to be like, everyone's supposed to show up and say like, I need, I bend the knee to you. And it's like, yeah, right. even though I like historically have the option to challenge you, haha, ha, like no one does that, let's be real. Right, right, right. Yeah. This, is, this is a ceremony, it's not really, and I even think that's where Shuri's making light of it in that particular situation, it's like, yeah. This is this is not really like meant to be a thing. Right. Like we're not we're not just gonna actually let the person with the biggest stick suddenly be king. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, but then like the the like Jabari, who are also sort of like isolated from the rest of Wakanda, like otherwise, you know, sort of like hard stop. Like it, it's not entirely unrealistic for T'Challa just to like finish what is otherwise very clearly uh, the leader of these people who are like gunning for Wakanda as they know it. Right, yeah. And and yet he still does like the noble thing and <clears throat> he does still like call for the yield and he does ultimately yield and like that's like what, what kind of like brings them to uh, together later. And then I feel like what Shuri is working towards the entire movie ultimately, like especially after she's like on this war path is like realizing what like what what is the right thing to do and like yeah. sort of like hailing back to that moment with T'Challa and she effectively calls for Namor to yield. Yeah. Like that's that's, that's what that, happens. Yeah, yeah. And that's that that is like the resolution. So I I, I feel to, I mean to me those were like mirrored oh absolutely pieces. like it yeah. was intended like to show that like she had she had like reached that stage or whatever. But even the way that like that kind of played out, I I almost felt like you brought up Thor Love and Thunder uh, I was reminded of Thor Ragnarok, where <coughs> Thor is without his hammer, he's in the arena in Sakaar, and Hulk is basically just like 
turning him into pulp. Right. You know? Yeah. And Thor basically has this like moment where he like sort of like is going like into his own astral plane where right, he's like, owed in. Right. And he like reminds him, you're the god of thunder. Right. Right. So, and and then like that's like when, you know, Thor basically uppercuts him. And, yeah. You know, the really cool scene. What I kept thinking was going to happen, what I what I just think <clears throat> may have like played better is almost the flip end of that. Like where... Because Namor basically, despite Shuri having Black Panther powers, Namor pretty much kicks her butt. I mean, like, mm -hmm. they trap him inside of the thing. They're using, like, the heat dehydration yeah. ion rays or yeah. whatever. They got him on the desert. Right. But, yeah. like, they're still, like, he's still taking her ship down, crashed her ship. They land in the desert. He's beating the crap out of her. And it's like, while she's losing, she ultimately gets, like, the flash to Ramonda and like sort of then like comes comes back and like leads that yield moment. I think she, no, she gets the flash while she's winning. The, okay. Does yeah, she she's the, got like the knife at his throat and that's when the flash happens. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Well, that, I mean, that's that's ultimately, I feel like, yeah. Take the Hulk Thor situation, flip those two. I feel like basically Shuri just should have been like, yeah. And, and maybe that is exactly how it played out and I'm just remembering it wrong. Um, it felt like, like, the her like her yeah Ramonda showing up in that moment though was sort of just like oh what a nice little like last second save like 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 she goes to the after plane and she sees Killmonger it's not like she saw both of them and was like mm, I'm gonna go over here like right. she like 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 she they thought she would see her mom and she didn't and then like just at the last second she's like that's show him who you are and it's like. Like, it, I, I don't know. It, it felt like she just sort of showed up right at the... I really thought she was just going to straight up end Namor. Like, just right, right there. there and just, there, like, right just there. Like, it. it was... Because as soon as she, like, comes down and, like, starts, like, commanding people around as the Black Panther, I was like... Like, it it was... It really felt like, oh, my gosh. Are we actually going to be watching, like, a like a villain origin story like or an something? Or an anti-hero, yeah, like at the very least. Yeah. Which sort of, like, you know, would fit inside the movie. Because Namor was kind of, like, an anti-hero himself. Well, a little bit. And I, the, the thing I was comparing it to in my head a little bit is, is it Zha Ling from Shang-Chi, his sister? Oh, gosh, I cannot it's, remember it's her name. It's X-I-A-L-I-N-G, I think. Okay. Um, but she at the, like, you know, she at the end of Shang-Chi, you see her sitting on, like, the throne of, like, yeah. you know, the headquarters that her, that her father had previously resided over in very similar, like, situations where you're talking about, like, a band of, like, hardcore mercenaries effectively yeah. under this banner and, like, under um, Shang's father's rule, it was, like, very, like, traditionally oriented, like, like, linear, whatever. Right. And then, like, under hers, it's kind of got that, like, nightclub vibe to it like yeah. where maybe wouldn't be surprising like a dj might be playing music over <laughs> yeah you know the the mercenaries doing like their their training or whatever um it felt like maybe they were setting up shuri to have like a version of like less traditionally rooted yeah highly technologically like, advanced like, like wild card wakanda exactly, exactly. yeah it's yeah. kind of what it felt like sort of like for a second there and i think in this vote like watching this movie like i don't know if it would have made well, here's what, let me back up here. While watching this movie, at like, and wondering during that whole final battle, like, what is going on? Like, because like, to say like, wh whether you're watching a villain origin story or not, like ultimately she makes the right decision at the end and spares Namor's life. But like, before that, like the entire final battle is the move of a villain. You know, like she officially, I feel like crosses the line for like the whole third act. Of oh, the yeah. movie, more yeah. or less. Like, she has, like, obviously, I don't want to say, like, an unprovoked attack against, like, Namor because he did come and invade the city or oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. But she just, like, she goes into the ocean with Big Boat, provokes them, lures them to the surface into a trap, attacks them, like, out of nowhere, like, captures their leader and fully intends to kill him. Like, that is the reason they are doing it. Right. You know, like, she is definitely, like, gone over to the dark side and everyone's just following her. Right. And it's just like, oh, oh man, this is, this is wild. And so often I feel like in, uh, in movies where they try and play this card on you, it doesn't work. Like, like if you go to like Return of the Jedi, there's this like big question, like is, is Luke gonna go to the dark side? Oh my gosh. And you're like, no, like <laughs> not, no, of course he's not. Like, what right. are you talking about? Like, like they do this all the time in 
in in movies where like they 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 attempt to lure the hero to the dark side. In the back of your mind, you're like, I yeah, like you're never really like, yeah, they're probably gonna. I bet they do go, you know, it's never really a question. You know, they're going to make the right decision in the end and it's not a problem. But like, as we were watching this, I was like, I do not know. Okay. Like, like she is there. And I think the reason is because, and I thought this was like suddenly the, the full power of like WandaVision and Doctor Strange, like everything that set up, like was the reason I did not know what was going to happen in this movie now. Like, like, like Wanda, when she turns, yeah. she's like turned. Yeah. yeah. Like, like Wanda, like was a hero. Everyone loved Wanda. Then you had WandaVision and you're like, that was, well, I mean, she sort of like won against the bad guy at the end, but like she enslaved that whole town for like a month and that was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah. And then she showed up at Kamartage and she just like destroyed the whole base. And then she went to that other universe and like destroyed their Avengers. And like, like it was pretty, like Wanda goes completely off the deep end. You're like, okay, it is not out of bounds for a hero to go to the other side. Now it's just like, They've maybe been setting this up the whole time. Well, like, I, like I honestly did not know, and I I loved that about it. I was like, I don't know what she's gonna do. She might kill him. It was like I don't think. Like the only reason I thought Namor wouldn't die was because like it's like they they they're gonna want to bring the civilization back in more movies. So that's why I don't think he'll die. But like, I, yeah. Okay. So then what what amount of like Val being included in this movie uh. was contributing to that? Because act uh, as near there as is near that as, too. Yeah. As near as we can tell, Val is presently putting together what I believe will be like the the, the thunderbolt. The or, thunderbolt. Yeah. So, so basically, like the anti-hero Avengers. Yeah. Made of like you know all of these um, like U.S. agent. Yeah. And, like all US these agent, other characters. Abomination. Right. Uh, probably not unconfirmed. I suppose. Um, Who's, Who, who's um, Black Widow's Black sister? Widow, yeah, Yelena. 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 Yeah. Probably Kate Bishop. In yeah. there, throw her in there. Right. You know. Yeah. It does seem like Val is assembling her own little team of anti-heroes that will uh, be doing something. Like certainly she's very evil, and certainly she will be a very big, big bad at some point. Um, that could have been contributing to it. Well, like yeah, like she shows up at the end and just like get because yeah, she's like I think about if America was the only country that had vibranium all the time. She's right. like, yeah, because you want to use it. <laughs> right. No, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So then that then, was yeah, a, So if she had been allied with Shuri all of a sudden and been like, oh, no. <laughs> right. Well, so now it's also curious because you you discover that Everett Ross or Martin Freeman's character yeah. has now been married to her, which I felt like was a, yeah, like like, a, like a mic drop moment. Like, okay, then. Uh, but I felt like it also threw like a thousand question marks into my brain in terms of like kind of what's going on. Uh, like I'm assuming because, okay. So Val, we think is putting together the Thunderbolts. There is very famously <coughs> the character in like Marvel called Thunderbolt Ross, who is now been recast from the original actor to Harrison Ford. I believe what? Uh, is going to play, be playing Thunderbolt Ross. Oh, I did not know that, but uh, it's because well, the, the original actor died in real life. I yes. Believe, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's like Everett's name is Everett Ross. Yeah. And he was married to who was going to be the leader of the Thunderbolts. Yeah, that's so what it seems like, like. I was like, does this mean that Martin Freeman is going to be Thunderbolt Ross all of a sudden? I, and it was like, is he? Does, yeah, but, who knows? But then Val definitely seems like she's going to be like more, you know, I think they're building a gray area. You know, you got like Captain America basically on like the, you know, pure heart end of the spectrum. And right. then you've got like, I don't know. Who's the, who's the most evil of all evil? Oh, like Thanos. So we'll, go yeah. Thanos. we'll go with Thanos. We'll go with Thanos. He was pretty bad. <laughs> he was pretty bad. Uh, but then, you know, it seems like they're really building this like middle ground. And um, it's it's interesting to see what they're doing with that because we know Val's putting together this legion of antiheroes. But then at the end, Okoye goes in and saves Everett. Yeah. And I, there's no part of me that can see a world where Okoye is not good. Oh, um, for sure. So it's like... Is what they're going to be doing, like, building, like, the new little, like, Civil War teams? Like, situation. Could be. Yeah. Yeah, where you just have, like, Everett Ross's group of people versus Madam Hydra kind of group of people. Right. Yeah. And I mean, they certainly are going to want, like, another Civil War type movie. Right. At some point. So, the question, though, that I think starts to build, if you want to, like, zoom out from, like, an MCU perspective just a little bit, is, like, 
are they are they reaching a point that that I almost feel like I could compare to ourselves? So like we we do like Harry Potter fan theories here on the channel, and I have felt like in the early days of Harry Potter fan theories, we were doing like the very big obvious questions that anybody who read the books once might be able to be like, oh, I'm curious about that. Click. Right. <laughs> um, and now it's like you know that one character that showed up that one time who had that one comment that ended up being kind of deeply impactful. How about we talk about them for like 25 minutes? Let's do it. Like it's a little bit harder to get those questions because we've gotten so deep into it at this point in time. It's like, it's so granular, yeah. like the specifics that we're looking at. I don't know if the MCU is finding themselves in that situation where they keep wanting to have these like mind blown moments, but it's like at this point, it's almost more like this will have a bigger payoff later once I understand why it's relevant than it did when it was introduced. Sure. And I would say that that whole situation with um, Okoye, not Okoye rather, but uh, Everett Ross and Val, probably are like that. Like if they're about to be like huge players in the MCU, but similarly, like when Okoye is like finally outfitted with this like oh, costume, yeah, like they've the, been- the Night Angel or whatever. Yeah, they call it the Midnight Angel oh, Armor. Oh, was it the mi Midnight? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Midnight Angel Armor. Yeah. Um, that was like one of those things where like, I could tell that it was supposed to be a big deal. Oh but man. But like, it was like, <sighs> You know, like, I mean, it just, it was clean over my head. I was like, I'm, Aquae shows up and she's in this crazy outfit and it looks cool, but it's like, did I'm they gonna, just introduce something? Let me just go ahead and say, I did not think it looked cool. Okay, okay, that's fine then, that's fine then. <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, the whole time they kept showing it and I was like, someone's gonna wear that at the end. But that's like one of those things, yeah, like if you were like, maybe if you read the comics all the time, like you always know Okoye is, a, is on the verge of becoming Midnight Angel. And like when you see her the first time on screen, you're like, I can't wait to see that costume they finally give her someday. Right, well, yeah. and if you go back to the original like Iron Man, um, uh, who is, who is, his Tony best Stark? <laughs> Not yet. I know Tony Stark. Who is his best friend? Ro Rhodes. Rhodey. Rhodey. Yeah. Um, the, you have that moment where like at the end of the movie in, in the original Iron Man, he like looks at the row of suits and he sees like the silver one and he's like, next time. You know, and it's yeah. like, he's basically setting up Warhammer. Right, like, yeah. You know, for, for the future. And like, that's one of those things where it's like- War Machine. War Machine. War Machine. Uh, that's one of those things though, like when you know <laughs> that that's part of like his story. Like when you even know that like Rhodey is headed down that path, when you see that you're like, oh, they yeah. didn't do the thing. Um, this was one of those where I was like, I, I, was like, I just don't, I just don't. I've just never even that. heard of this yeah, yeah. suit of armor. I don't know about this character at all. Yeah, um, that I thought like, they they, sh they showed the armor earlier. They sort of had like a Goya keep sort of like making fun of it yes. throughout the movie. And I was like, I'm kind of with her. Like, I don't think it looks that I feel like it doesn't like look that cool. Um, but then they finally give it to her and she shows up and you know, she kicks butt or whatever. And they're like, this will finally even the odds. And it's like, like, I don't know. I just didn't really like the, the midnight angel armor, like almost at all. Like, like the whole the, bit. I didn't like the whole bit. I didn't like the idea behind it. I didn't think it looked cool. I thought it looked like a, like a bad power Rangers villain costume. Okay. Well, like, on that note, yeah, I, I had actually a very similar critique of um, pretty much almost everything to do with Ironheart, um, like okay. Riri Williams. Like, yeah. I felt like, it, it, and just while we're on this topic, I feel like it, it could fit together into, you know, whatever. Um, but like, they were basically being like introduced to this like Tony Stark level smart person. Like yeah. running laps around the professors at MIT, like, the United States effectively like stole her meteorology, you know, project yeah. to go and like- look, look for vibranium. Look for vibranium. She's like the scientist who doesn't even realize that like her own like stuff is being used to like this like crazy extent. So like they're, they're sort of kind of building like her credibility on the basis of like, oh, well she built that machine so she must be very smart. Yeah, well, but, like her building the machine is like the catalyst for everything happening in the movie. Right, yeah. but like they, I felt like instead of giving you these moments where you got to know like how smart she was, it was like they told you, they didn't show you. And instead of like opting for an opportunity to like show you how smart she is, they've got um, like her going up and sort of like Venmoing herself from someone else's phone because she like did their homework yeah. type thing. And it was like, 
All right. It was a like, lot of like tell don't show as far as like how smart Riri is. Right. So and, yeah, like you yeah, yeah you go to her warehouse and like they're they're sort of giving you tidbits like yeah my dad was or yeah, my stepdad was a mechanic. Um, yeah, I like, started building my first machine when I was three, and I cracked through my own encryption. It took me a month. Whoops. Right. It's like oh man, hey look this this battle's about to happen. Let me lower the thing I've been yeah. working on for months down. Hey, check it out. It's sort of like a Iron Man suit. Yeah, they like walk in and they're like, oh no, she's got an Iron Man suit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, I felt like the, I felt like compared to literally every other thing they had already established her doing, I was like, this feels like a kind of low tech Iron Man suit. It like, almost did. It was like, yeah, a little it, bit. like everything else she's done is so much more impressive than the build of this Iron Man suit. Yeah. Um, and clearly she's taken like a whole bunch of time building it. Right. Um, and then on top of that, I was like, okay, so like, you know, later on they're, they're sort of showing like her and Sherry working in like the workshop together. And like, you finally get that moment where they like hammer out like the really like edgy looking like iron heart, yeah. you know, piece. And then they show you the suit later and it looks like it came off of like, yeah, it looked like it came like out of an anime or something. Yeah, yeah. it did. It felt like very like candy striped or uh, c candy painted, candy coated. What is the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Um, yeah, like I wish, Yeah, I, may, maybe there's more details that I just missed on the first pass. So I wish there had been like almost like a bunch of like, and like anime posters or like Japanese Japanese movie posters or something like in her room or something that like would have sort of like let like, like oh look this is the kind of stuff she likes so right. yeah she made she did it herself right sort of right. thing even um, if her dorm just had like toys in it yeah like she's like this crazy smart person who's hustling people for like whatever and then also has like, toys right like, something like that because yeah I thought like I didn't mind the Ironheart suit as much it's just like because on the one hand it's like. Yeah, like it looked a little like yeah, candy striped, maybe yeah. like a little bit like, like a big toy kind of thing. But also it's like it did it was a unique looking Iron Man suit. And it's like at this point we've seen a lot of Iron Man suits. That I, I mean, and to be fair to that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's 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 fine. But like, you know, they showed you like the punch out of like the iron heart, like yeah. jagged metal looking thing, and then it was like, I'm sorry, but that had nothing to do with yeah, the Yeah, like where design. was it? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> but did you, was the was the thing even like heart shaped? I, boy, I, it didn't, it didn't call out to me if it was. I could see there was also a heart shape on her, um, like, uh, prototype version. Okay. At the beginning. So, so that was there. And there was one whole conversation, like, Shuri was having, like, about her heart or something. At one point, I was like, oh, this is how they're going to come up with a name for Ironheart. Right. And then they, they didn't. That wasn't part of it. And I was like, that was, I feel like yes. Just, just missed each other there a little bit, right? Um, but whatever. I thought uh, that that one was okay. The um, but the the Midnight Angel suit. I'm gonna go back to it. Okay, I yeah, no, and that's fine. Like that's it. fine. Yeah. Okay, because a couple reasons. One, the on the other hand, the Okoye bridge fight scene I thought was awesome. Like when she's fighting the um, the oh. guys on the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. That, that to me was like one of the top like five Marvel fight scenes. End of sentence. Yeah, you it, know, it was, I was like, "This is so cool." Well, uh, that was the thing. I was, I was loving, and maybe, maybe that's why I was going a little bit softer on on the uh, the Midnight Armor itself. Because I actually, I thought Okoye was like a great piece of oh. of the whole movie. Well, me like, too. I, I like pretty much loved almost everything she did. I well, I agree. I agree because <laughs> I thought like, yeah, she had like such a good like character <laughs> arc going into the movie, and like, but I think what, what has always been so cool about Okoye is that she doesn't have any superpowers. She's just like the best, most creative person using the vibranium spear, and like she's used it so many different ways. Even yeah. when she just like lightsabers it out to blow up Ray Ray's speaker that she throws out, I was like, that was awesome. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> is that a spear? <laughs> is that a spear? You brought a spear. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, why'd you do that? But then it was like, and then like they like, I made you a new spear. She's like, you made me a new spear. And it's like I one, I couldn't tell you anything about the new spear, and it was just like I don't feel like Okoye needs a suit of armor to be cool or effective in any way. And I felt that that like almost took away from her character because like I don't need every every hero in the MCU to just be like, look, I've got an Iron Man suit now. Right. Um, yeah. That's, sort of thing. That's fair. That's fair. So I don't know. I thought it like I, I thought like when she took the mask down too, like it kind of like made her head like look like funny looking. <laughs> like uh, it, it, like 
right? I thought I thought mass down, especially <laughs> like it seemed like it yeah. wasn't working as well. Um, and and so that's I think that's a piece we can kind of use to like take the next like leap in terms of like my critique of the movie, which was basically that like. I, I think that this movie had some absolutely like spectacular performances in it. I think there was like a lot of cool stuff going on with it. Um, however, I, I also felt like it was trying to do an awful lot of things sure. uh, in terms of multiple storylines that were all kind of being introduced, multiple new characters that were sort of like flying about in like different directions, um, some, sometimes quite literally. But then also I felt like like if you were to take Namor and like what his abilities are and sort of like the flapping like like wings on like his ankles and stuff. I personally did not think that like like that like maybe the, the like production end of things, the special effects ends of things was like quite ready for everything they wanted to do. Hmm. Um, like I, I felt like I was sort of being like taken out of it a good handful of times on the basis of like I just don't know if like I felt like that like that looked that good oh, or man. that compelling. I don't know. I feel like I was on the other end of things. Like I feel like when I watched the trailers, I was like, they're gonna have a hard time with the winged ankle things. But then like when I was watching it, I was like, they're doing a great. This is awesome. I feel like it's uh, he. It reminded me a lot of like Valkyrie in like Endgame, where she's just like taking the spear along the side of the like the flying guys in the big battle. And Terrence up down. She's like he's just like way nimble and faster and stronger because he can just sort of move wherever he wants. And yeah, I don't know, it felt believable to me. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, I and that, yeah, that's sort of fine. Know. Yeah, I suppose that's like one of those questions. Yeah, that, like as to see like how how did everybody else respond to it? Um, the other piece of it that I felt like they struggled with personally was that like going into like Namor's world. Mm -hmm. I think that they had very clearly done an enormous amount of like underwater production. Yeah. Um, like clearly a bunch of actors were in the water. A bunch of people were like getting these scenes and stuff. But I think that like no matter how good of an actor you are, it's just like you are fighting some kind of an uphill battle in terms like of being underwater, being underwater. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just it's it's difficult. And so like they're taking you through this world. And I was sort of being brought back to a little bit of um, like the Gungans village uh -huh. uh, from Phantom Menace. And also um, Avatar, like the oh, like James the Cameron, yeah, yeah, um, like the, like those kinds of like worlds and uh -huh. stuff. Um, and I think, I think what kind of felt like was happening is that they were having like a, a hard time getting proper emotions across, or like figuring out how to like have them like talk to each other, because it seemed like there was a handful of situations where like maybe they had like Namor underwater and they filmed him and then maybe they also like filmed him like in front of a green screen and then like put like his face <clears throat> onto the underwater face so that he could like talk mm -hmm. but like it's I, I don't know like it yeah um I, I didn't feel like as like mesmerized as I expected to be by what was otherwise a rather incredible like underwater underwater Atlantis world yeah Village. Right, 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 right. I see. What you, yeah, I, I do know what you mean. It's always a challenge when you have to make like an underwater city, underwater yeah. world uh, situation. That's it. Like I thought, Talokan looked like better and more realistic than like what, like, like what we saw in like Aquaman or something. Okay. Like I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it looked nicer than that. Um, I, I didn't think about uh, Star Wars. Okay. But that is a good comparison as well. I feel like a lot of times what they do in underwater things is like, yeah, the city's underwater, but they still walk, you know? It's not like bubbles. I, yeah, you know? and, yeah, and may, maybe it seemed like there was going to be a, a piece of that. I'm not, I'm not sure why I, I thought that, like, that, yeah. you know, that they would live underwater, but maybe, like, you could still conceivably, like, get out. Like, even, even like, having, like, Shuri down there in like the really, really like industrial, like what well, deep sea dive suit. Okay, there was something weird about that too, because they were like, or oh, you can wear a suit. And it was just like, like they had the suit, but then they also said Shuri was the first surface worlder to ever visit them. So it was like, so why did you have the suit? Uh, uh, that was like one of those where I was like, was this just a callback to the beginning where yeah. they like attacked those people? Yeah, it's like, did. Is did it you that steal the suit? suit? Yeah, I didn't yeah. know because it looked like the exact same. It was like, is it that suit? It looked like you like broke that suit. It did. Um, yeah. Whatever. Okay. I guess that. I guess that can work. I also felt like if we're gonna, yeah, if we can just talk about like Namor's uh, plan. 
if you want to say. I felt like maybe some of my suspension of disbelief was like how, like, it felt like a big, like, um, like a big, a, a bunch of like flawed logic in his reasoning for like what he wanted to do. Okay. Right, so like the whole plot is set in motion by the by Ray Ray's invention of this like vibranium detector device or whatever. And so sure enough, they go down and they find it and he's like, well, I gotta protect my people. I knew this day would come and now is the time to strike because they're gonna come and take our vibranium and ruin our world or whatever. Right. And I was like, okay, all right, all right, understood. You don't want them to come down and steal your vibranium. They might be able to find it. So your solution is to successfully like, I don't know, uh, take over the world, basically. And it's like, okay, I see, I, I understand you don't want them to come down. And I understand you want to protect your area. But at the same time, like you live underwater in a completely hidden city and have the vibranium and are can use that technology to defend yourself. Right. Right, so like, in what world do you think people who live on the surface and don't have vibranium are gonna be able to come down and beat you in any kind of battle at all? Especially when the only way for Sherry to get down there is in this incredibly unwieldy suit. Yeah, not only in this incredibly unwieldy suit, after you find a hidden current that takes you through like a sidewinder maze. Right. Like, to bring you to the hidden city of Talokan. It's like, and at the same time, if you think you have the offensive capabilities to take down the rest of the world's militaries from your little underwater city. Why are you concerned about them coming to you on your home turf? Like, it, like it, they're, they're not gonna win. It, it did feel a little bit like, yeah, like, like they went from a very just like defensive. We just wanna like keep to ourselves. We wanna be down here. We wanna like live the life that we've established for ourselves and it is good and happy and healthy. And like, that's that. And then it was kind of like, like, we don't want anything to do with anybody else, which is, to be fair, I guess, fairly similar to, like, how Wakanda yeah, had been exactly. for a very long time, which was, like, we don't want anybody to know what we have. We don't want anybody to come and, like, take these resources and, like, do bad things with them. Um, and, yeah, it did, it did seem like I kind of understand where you're coming from. It's, like, they're being very defensive about just about everything. And then the moment that there was any reason to, like, be actionably defensive, it was, like, a very offensive version of defense. Right. Like... Like the best offense is a good defense, and yeah, like so if, if they come down here, they're gonna beat us. So we need to go up there and beat them. It's like neither of those things sound right. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. if you go up there, you have one city's worth of people. Like I don't think you're gonna take down the rest of the world. <laughs> right. Right. And then I guess eventually also too, you learn that like Namor himself has this like limitation, which is that like he needs to like continuously like he can live above and below water but like he also needs to like, like stay rehydrate rehydrate effectively yeah. yeah that was like one of these things as well where it was it was like a strange limit to, like i was very surprised that they were like oh we can dry him out and it was like is that it is like, that it? like, is this the conclusion that like two of like apparently the smartest people who have ever lived on this entire planet, like that was the aha moment? Like, yeah. hey, you want to know it might be good against people who live underwater exclusively? Dryness. Yeah, and it's it like was, it seemed like it was based on a bit of a a bit of a a, a, a jump because they're like he he went back beneath the surface before he attacked your jet or whatever. Right. And it was just like, yeah, but you were shooting at him. Like, how do you know he was rehydrating, not just? Hiding, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you know? Just being underwater, right? Like I, I was like, boy, that's a, that's a, that's a jump, you guys. I guess they were right, sort of. It seemed like drying him out had to say had about the same effect as like kryptonite ever has on Superman, which is like none. Oh yeah, it was like we're gonna show you like, oh, this is a problem, but also like, uh, it was like it was a problem long enough, basically for him to just promptly take over the situation and crash the plane that he was being locked inside of, where yeah. he then was like. 200 yards from water. Yeah, yeah. So it's now, like, now this it's just plan like a little, did not work well. Did not work well. Yeah, yeah, don't know. So uh, there was that. And uh, yeah, and then again, that's sort of why I come back to the fact, like in that in that scene, I felt like Shuri basically got like beat. Like, I mean. I mean, she does get stabbed through the, the abdomen with a spear. Yeah. So yeah. they're, yeah. 
So uh, she got like a few good claw marks in there. It also seemed like she managed to scratch him like a few times with the claws. And I feel like this is a problem that like they always have in like Wolverine movies or even in the last Black Panther, I felt like they had this problem where it's like their their power is to be able to rip to someone to shreds with their sharp claws. But right. like they're the hero, so you could rarely have them just do it. Right. But yeah. it's like now you're fighting hand to hand and Shuri is aiming to kill. And uh you're gonna need to make it at least look like they're trading blows. So it's gonna be really hard for him to hit him in a non-lethal way. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. It was. It was yeah. I, I thought. I thought for what was otherwise like a rather long movie, the climactic battle between the two at the end seemed anticlimactic. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit. Like I, I felt like it could have been a little bit more. Uh, she just got straight up. Just if. She, what if she killed him? Would that have been, would that have been climactic enough? It would have been shocking. It would have been um, shocking. It would have been shocking. I, I'm not sure if that would have been better, um, but like I, I, I almost, I mean, as, as ever with any, you know, of these movies, typically what you have is like the tide turns a few times. Like, yeah. you know, the, the rebels arrive and they have surprised attack. So like all of a sudden the empire's on its heels, but then the empire has like, like way more forces. And all of a sudden, like, despite like the ragtag efforts of the rebels, they're pretty much they being got overpowered. The numbers. Yeah. But then all of a sudden the one key character inside of the base pulls that one switch and that switch basically like turns off the, you know, whatever. And right, all of a but, sudden, but then the one big bad shows up and it's like, okay, my minions have failed me, but I will not. And it's like, oh, now the tide is going back the other way. Right. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you know, I felt like there was a little bit of that going on, but like, I mean, Namor pretty much had them by the throat for most of the movie. Well, and the, I, I yeah. would even say in that last, the last battle, like, you know, um, sure he shows up there with like the ship, which, on the whole, like going and fighting like an aquatic people on a boat. Oh felt, my like, gosh! Like I was like, not, not "What good, are you doing?" Yeah, not a very good tactical not decision. Not a good tactical decision at all. Um, and they managed to put up, I guess, sort of a good fight. Against but the I, how many people did Sherry lose by doing that? Like, oh, I by know. By the like, end of it, like the, like, the, the Wakandans the, lose the boat fight. They absolutely do. I yeah. mean, by the end of it, I mean, there's like the the characters whose names appear in the credits that are left. Like, yeah, effectively, like you know. 10 to 12 people survive from like Wakanda. So right. I mean, Shuri's battle plan there while like was reckless, selfish, and ultimately pretty costly. Yes. Um, just to sort of then like immediately recoup. Um, the the piece of it with Nakia, so if you want to like take the next step forward. Nakia. Nakia. I do that every time. Nakia. Um, we There's like this big reveal that there is like a nephew. Yeah. And the nephew piece, especially the fact that he's named after T'Challa himself, was like, I don't even know that that needed to wait until the mid credits scene. Mm -hmm. Like, I almost felt like that could have been a piece of it where it's like, Shuri could have, like, packed up and and gone to Haiti to been, like, tail between her legs. Like, I don't know what to do here. Right. And then then, she meets the nephew and it's like, wow, yes. And then she goes and recreates the heart shape. That might have made more sense. That might have made more sense. I thought, um, I also thought Nakia's role, like that, well, I I, not, I mean, I love her character and stuff, but like the, uh, Ramonda shows up in Haiti and is like, you've been out of the game for six years. I need you to come back and find Shuri. And she's just like, all right. And she does it in like, I don't know, like four hours or something. I I was like, man, you suddenly uh, have an off screen tip from a professor that a woman saw a winged man and you successfully convince her to tell you. And then you immediately have your underwater vibranium ship and you just find Shuri and she's unguarded and you take her. <laughs> it was like, that was so easy. A, a lot of stuff happened very, yeah. very quickly with that sequence. Um, one of the things I'm, I am curious about is like, it seemed like Haiti as like a location was playing like a rather significant role in things mm-hmm. um, that like it's specifically where she decided to like go and like post up and like make home for herself and stuff. Cause the, the entire um, uh, like the jet lag, these characters must've been like experiencing from being like, you know, stateside, back to Africa, to South America, like all within what felt like, you know, 12 hour increments of one another. Yeah. You know, it was like, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of jumping around from like here and everywhere. I guess those Wakandan jets are pretty fast. Pretty so maybe fast. you can just get over the ocean yeah. and just like straight book it. And yeah. You're, you're not that bad, but um, anyway, yeah. So it, there was, I, I felt like 
It was here. Let me let me just try to read my sentence. Okay, because I read feel your like sentence. this was like this is like my overall thoughts. Um, I thought that Wakanda Forever handled T'Challa and Chadwick Boseman very well. I thought the silence at the beginning was super powerful. I thought there were some incredible performances, specifically from Angela Bassett as Ramonda, Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia, and. Uh, Dane Giara as a Koye. Um, I felt like otherwise the movie went on for too long, tried to do too much, and was maybe out of its depth when it came to special effects. Okay. That was my like Good final summary. final like review of where I landed across the board with the movie. Okay. How All about right. yourself? All right. I think I feel like if it sounds like I've been nitpicking the entire time, I feel like that's mostly all I'm doing. Cause at the end of it, I felt like mostly like the the the, maybe like the Val uh, stuff with um, Everett Ross, all of that felt like they could have just completely cut it. Okay. Like that, I was like, I like this is offering almost nothing to the story at all, other than clearly you're setting stuff up further in the MCU. And it's like, yes. if you cut this from the movie, I don't think it would make almost any difference, except it's adding context to later stuff. So other than that though, um, I like minus like the nitpicks that I've already brought up, I really liked it like across the board. I thought it was awesome. I thought it handled the Chadwick Boseman stuff well. I thought they could have done like an easy out with Shuri's character where she's like, yeah, she's just, uh, T'Challa 2.0 and she's super noble and she's always been that spunky kid and now she has to, the, the real struggle is stepping into those shoes but it was like no the real struggle is grief and knowing how to be a leader and like whether or not she's going to be the same or she's going to like carve her own path and I was like oh, that was really good I loved how the rest of the MCU like made me question what was going to happen in this movie that's fair um, I, I do think that was I think that was something I hadn't really like noticed until you had brought it up was like there, there's no doubt about it when I was sitting in my seat last night in the theater I was like She's gonna kill him, isn't she? Like, yeah. <laughs> like this is just, this is just like, and it'll be interesting too, because I think people have been calling for Namor for a long time. Yeah, and for him to like finally arrive in such a momentous way, be so powerful, and then promptly killed. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Woo. Whoa! That'd have been okay. crazy. That'd have okay. been crazy. It yes. also could have like, even though, even if they'd done that, it could have been like, cause he's like, I'm a mutant or whatever, and it's like that could have set up some sort of like hatred by certain groups of mutants against like Wakanda or yeah, you know whatever like, you could have like, had like a, a you know yeah X-Men versus Wakanda kind of I don't know yeah whatever the X-Men are coming we know we know we can't can't wait for that I love the X-Men is, th is there <laughs> some explanation that like his version of being a mutant is going to be the same I mean it it almost feels like the other mutants will need some type of um power source coming from something similar to how Namor is powered for them to be mutants in the same capacity. Um, I The way I understood it was that he was like the, like the winged feet was, the winged feet and the ears were like his mutant powers. Okay. Whereas the ability to breathe underwater and like live a long time was just from the like the herb. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was like you you were born with superpowers and a mutant. Okay. Is how okay. is what I thought. I, I will be curious then. Yeah. Like as they as they continue to roll out the X Men uh, and and sort of like what what and how and why mutants are now in the MCU is what 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 is is what or even if there needs to be some type of like common thread that like ties them together like oh it's from that oil spill we all became mutants or whatever oh it's, um, it's normally just like the x gene the x gene that's okay. like it's like a genetic mutation that's so what makes, so when they say mutants it's because they have a, a mutated gene right right yeah. right but like I, I wonder if for like namor then was he just like sort of uh odd lottery chance that he both fell into this like unique position in the civilization and also had that gene and yeah, then basically okay. yeah. so that's it. i think so i think so yeah i don't think i don't think the rest of the mutants are going to be like um from like a um like big bang um like what what is it in, what did they do in the flash in like the first season where they had the reactor go off and it makes everyone oh yeah yeah, yeah i don't yeah. think it's gonna be something like that right, right. although like because that's what happened that's i think more what the inhumans are okay is um where they all have some sort of like latent physiology but then they're all exposed to something okay and that's what like triggers its activation or something okay um or at least that's what it was in agents of shield i don't know um on the whole though so as we as we round off a review of uh, Wakanda Forever. Yeah. What do you have a do you have a number? 
I'm feeling like the number that's coming to mind is like a like a 94. Whoa! Like, I, like, yeah, I mean, I was like thinking about it all night. I could tell I had like dreams about it. I woke up thinking about it. I was like, normally, like there's sometimes I go and see these movies and I wake up the next morning. I'm like, nah, I haven't I'll, I'll like realize a few days later, like I haven't thought about it since I left the theater. Right. It's like I've been thinking about it the whole time. It's like mm, I can. That's like that's like my sort of my gauge for like. That was pretty good. That really impacted me. I really liked it. Okay. So, yeah, I thought I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Okay. I I think I was more critical of it. I would say that more of my um, more of my comments today were not just being nitpicky. They were more like impacted right, like, yeah. by my <laughs> Your viewership experience. Of it. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Um. So I would say that like when it came down to it for me, I was I was like trying to. It's like a it's like a funny like slider scale like where you're kind of like going back and forth and it's like what what number did feel right to me in terms of like like where did I land and like and like I said I mean there's some of this movie I absolutely loved like I, I we we didn't even like touch on it um, Angela Bassett as Ramonda yeah. I thought that her performance was insane oh and she was like yeah she was really shredded. good shredded yeah like, oh mean, she, she was she looked yeah amazing she, yeah, i thought got like, for the role and yeah. it's like one of those characters it's like in the first movie she was like an important character but sort of like a like a sideline character yeah and it's like because of real world circumstances like her character got very thrust into the spotlight and she just like owned it she absolutely yeah. owned it yeah like i, I mean in, in my mind like watching her i was like she's just like she, i wonder how they got a real queen to come and play yeah, like this yeah, role right. like I, I mean so i hate that i didn't praise her more throughout the rest of our review here because it was like one of the things that i was like i, I thought that i thought that she was really really truly spectacular but uh my score when i came down to it and like sort of like combed through everything was a 78 oh man so we were like this may be one of the movies we've been more separated on. i think so i think so, so. Man. Right. um yeah, I, I think that I was distracted by like a lot of the stuff that was going on. I think that I was a little bit like underwhelmed with uh, Riri Williams and Iron Heart. I felt like the I agree. I think that the um, Everett Ross and Val plot like in the United States felt like a little like we don't really need yeah, this. It was like, you were in the first Black Panther movie, so we should put you in the second one. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's like this is where Ross shows up and it's like, OK, that's yeah. that's fine, I guess. Yeah, it's like if all he did was show up to tell them like who Ray Ray was, then like that would have been fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it could have been like a like verging on on like, like cameo, cameo status. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought that I felt like Shuri's motivations. Yeah, like I was I was like maybe just like having like a harder time. Like not that I like felt like they were. I mean, she went through a lot, like a lot of bad things happened. A lot of bad things. Like, like, she effectively became, you know, leader of this nation that was just attacked and like her mother died, like right in front of her and stuff. So like the fact that she was like, you know, anywhere even verging on like unhinged or something is like completely reasonable uh, given like, you know, all the stuff that yeah. she was going through. But I felt like I still was, I was tracking strangely with it. I didn't know how I felt about like Namor and his whole world, you know. It does seem like, see. it seems like there was so much happening. It does very much, I feel like warrant like a, a second watch. <laughs> For sure that if you too. can like, yeah, like dissect it a little bit. We've only watched it once 12 hours ago. Yeah. So. So still, still sort of like sorting through it. I'll be, yeah, I'll be very curious to see. And I do think that there's a, a strong possibility that like a lot of the stuff that we like learned from this movie especially as it caps off phase this, four this phase of yeah. the mcu yeah is that like i think that there is a good strong possibility that like a lot of the stuff will become even more meaningful down the line as you kind of like continue to like come back to it and you're like oh okay like i i do see like we're this and that and this and that and whatever we're like we're all building blocks but, right um, yeah. Otherwise, I'm I'm very very curious to hear what everybody at home thought about it. What was what you think of the Midnight Angel suit? Yeah, <laughs> love it, hate it. No, lame. Yeah, downgrade like, for a Koye. Yeah, downgrade. Less effective, if you ask me. Yeah, they for, lost that fight. For otherwise, for otherwise, who I felt like a Koye had just a truly oh, spectacular role in all. Absolutely, of it. she is she is a great version of that character who is like very stiff, and then like when you put her in different situations, she's like, like kind of funny it's kind of funny yeah. yeah like it works out like really 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 well for for like who she is uh and like when she got like taken down as general that was an emotional scene oh, man i was like, like i was no. like they can't no. be and like you know like like Ramon just like listing all the stuff that have happened i'm like, like, like while it's oh, like no it makes oh my, it almost makes it's sense like a lot of bad stuff has oh, happened i don't know uh, you're not bringing up her like fighting in the battle of thanos or you know yeah, yeah. Wakanda yeah. there or, uh, anyway things but whatever let us know all of your thoughts in the towel section down below. Uh, otherwise, until next time, bye! bye.